today is all about mastering keyframes inside of Premiere Pro. So what are keyframes? How do they work? How can we use them in our workflow to make our videos that much more cinematic? So I have an existing couple of shots here that I wanna actually add some titles and some cool like animated graphics on top of. And I thought this is a great example to show you how to actually create text and keyframe and animate the text properties. So let's say we wanna add some titles over these two clips right here. Go up into my workspaces and I'm gonna go to captions and graphics. Hover over to our toolbar and go to the type tool. Let's click inside of the program window here and type out my text. Because we're in the captions and graphics window, we have all of these properties that we can actually choose from. So I'm just gonna keep this simple and go to a font that I like to use in my work, align this to the center, take my anchor point, make sure that that is in the center as well. I'm gonna drag this on top of this clip here and drag it all the way down. Super simple, very easy, but that's not why we're here. We're here to talk about keyframes. How do we animate this text and make it look like it pops a little bit more. Let's add one more title down here. Press option or control on your keyboard and you're just gonna drag this out. And this is a really great shortcut for copying and pasting clips that are already on your timeline. Let's drag this down and let's actually change the name of this font. If you click on this graphic, you will now see that up here in the effects controls panel, this is where all of your keyframe properties live. So we have our text properties that also have keyframe abilities inside of the source text. All we're really concerned about is the motion of of these properties. You have your X and Y position and your scale positions as well. If I move this here, my anchor point is actually set to the center. So if I wanna put this in the center of the O here, when I move the scale, now it'll move from the center of where that anchor point is. Let's say we wanna take this, it's time to explore, have it come on the screen into the frame. So we're gonna drag that playhead here. I'm gonna set a toggle animation position right here on my first keyframe. And then I'm just gonna drag this out a little bit till I want it to come in. And then I'm gonna press the add remove keyframe. This adds another point. Right now, nothing is actually being done because we haven't set the parameters. So if I'm scrolling, there's no values that are changing between these keyframes. Use this little arrow. This is how you go to the previous keyframes. Move my position by clicking the position, making sure it's selected, holding shift and dragging this off of the frame. Now you know you have an animation started because you will have these blue icons and X's that have been created for us. These are basically handles so we can further animate them. But if we just play this back, now we have something that animates in at the time that we want this next clip to show up. Now, what I wanna actually do though is make this animation a little bit smoother than it is right now. Right click this first keyframe and go down here to temporal interpolation. And I like to start with ease out and then end with ease in. Now we have something that looks like it actually eases out and then kind of slowly eases in. And we can now take this one step further and we can highlight these two keyframes. And if we go up here to the little carrot icon and you drag this down, you can actually see a visual representation of what is happening with those two points. I can actually click on these handles here and I can drag each one of these handles independently of one another to add an even more aggressive animation coming in. So if I press play, that's pretty cool. Or I can go the other way and I can have a more aggressive animation coming out. All you're doing is creating time values between one point and another. Or maybe we wanna actually have the position animate out a different direction. Go now to the end of our timeline here. We're gonna select another position, and drag this out a little bit more, click motion, and I'm gonna drag this down. Now we have it animating off of the screen. I constantly keep this window up so that I can further adjust the properties as I'm going. What I actually wanna do is kind of place this inside of this negative space here. So I'm gonna scale in on my clip here. I'm gonna move myself over, change three days to its own layer. Command or control and hold will actually duplicate this other layer and you can just drag this other clip up. That way you don't have to create a brand new text layer. That already looks a lot cooler. It almost looks like it could be like a movie poster or the thumbnail for this video. And I have my libraries here to reference in the corner so that I have a color style and color palette that I can constantly reference. And maybe I want that to be my first text. Maybe we want this to be color of my hat here. So I've now just sampled those two colors. So now let's come in and animate these two properties here. Wild three days, I want this to maybe animate in off the left and I want in London to scale up position, scroll over, add another keyframe, just drag this over. Okay, so now we have this animating in. The closer you bring these keyframes together, the faster that animation will be, the further away 
you spread them apart, the slower it will be. Again, it's just a time value. I want to actually speed this up a little. So all I'm gonna do is just drag these two clips together. I'm gonna set my ease out point, and then I'm gonna set my ease in point, highlight those two points, drop this little arrow, drag this all the way down, and now we have something that looks a lot nicer than it was before. And I want in London to kind of come on around the same time. So let's maybe set the scale. So scale point, set a keyframe, drag this out, set another keyframe. Let's start this at zero. And if I play that back, you can see that it's actually coming up off of the left, which we do not want. And again, that's because our anchor point is set right here in the center. We just want this to be set to wherever we want that scale property to be zooming out of. So this comes in almost at the same time. Play this back and I'm going to do the same thing. Ease out, ease in, and then I'm going to further adjust these points. And we have something that looks, I think, pretty cool.